What's good, everybody? It is your girl, Tika Deshaun of All Things Ruthless, home of the Ruthless Addicts. Here to give you guys a brief recap of the one and only The Oval from Season 5, Episode 8. Sorry, not sorry. If F around and found out had a face, it would be this man right here, Manny Rakadushi. So the synopsis reads as follows. Simone decides to humble herself before Victoria for the greater good. Alan must choose which side to stand with when he's approached by the FBI. So in the last episode, we saw that Hunter uh, let Richard and Priscilla know that they were required to sample his food prior to serving him. Now, of course, Richard took the spoon, which I'm yelling at the screen. Richard put that damn spoon down, but Richard picks up the spoon and samples it. Now, Victor Priscilla, of course, is defiant. She's not with the shenanigans. She's not trying to sample anything because she says she's prepared the food and she knows that the food is good. And you, sir, are borderline on racism. Now, Hunter proceeds to let Priscilla know that he wants a taste of that big old booty um, because of the fact that his wife slept with her husband. Um, Priscilla is not with the shenanigans. I don't know why Hunter proceeds to try her every time. So again, she proceeds to let the president know you are borderline on racism. And he says, racist? Racist? How can I be racist? My children are mixed. My wife is black. Like, sir, that's a technic, the classic, oh my God, textbook statement. My friend is black. My wife is black. My this. So anyway, Hunter, calm down with the shenanigans. But mentioning children, Priscilla proceeds to let Hunter know, yes, or she says to him, yes, you say you have children. Where are your children? And at that very moment, Hunter F. around and found out that you can't play with Priscilla because Priscilla does not play fair. And she proceeds to let him know that, you know, where are your children? And he shuts the heck up. They walk out and then they are in the ca cafeteria area or the dining area where they prepare the food. Letting, of course, Richard is letting Priscilla know you can't talk to him like that. You're going to get fired. What are you doing? And at the most inopportune moment, in walks the one and only <laughs> Victoria. Now, Victoria is there to let the two of them know that she is going to require tea for her and Simone because, of course, Simone is coming there to make a visit. Now, Priscilla, she don't want to fool with Victoria right now. Victoria just does the most. Every time she's around Victoria or Priscilla, she does the most. It's almost as if she has to prove a point. Yeah, I mess with your man. And she literally rubs it in her face. She does this every time that she was around Priscilla. However, she continues to be mad, just respectful to Priscilla. Now, if you're so afraid of a person, why do you continue to try to put your power in their face? Put the past that the, the situation that you, you know, messed around with her husband. Why do you continue to do that to Priscilla? So anyway, Priscilla. Victoria makes her way over to Eli's office and she's there to, you know, just to have a conversation. Of course, there's some small talk between she and Max and it's a whole, a lot of yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know how they go. So anyway, she sits down with Eli and lets him know. Uh, first of all, she's trying to flirt with him and she's like, Victoria, we, he's like, Victoria, we can't do that right now. We can't be seen doing this. You know, we can't get caught, you know, after that one little snafu of him having to run out of, um, Victoria's bedroom, like a little child in high school, he is definitely not trying to have one of those moments again where someone will walk in on them. So anyway, she proceeds to say that your wife better apologize. And if she doesn't, she's going to be locked up. And she says, how could, how did you convince her to, um, to apologize? And he said that, you know, to reassure Victoria, he says that I told her that I would never mess with you. And she's like, what? Never mess with me. So anyway, this meeting is about to go down and Victoria is there with about 10 secret service behind her because she knows that Simone will knock the Rakadushi and everything else out of her. But Simone is escorted by one and only Body Baby. Now, of course, Victoria looks at, at Simone and says, um, oh, I know you two are messing around. 
And unfortunately, Victoria, not everybody in the White House is messing around. Just because you are does not mean that everybody else is. So Simone has a seat and Victoria um, in walks Priscilla and Priscilla, uh, Victoria says that um, I, oh, I didn't sleep with your man, but I did sleep with her man after lying and saying that she didn't, you know, mess around with, with, uh, Simone's husband. So anyway, you guys, then we see at the jail that this one and only Allen has been released from jail under the command or under the request of Donald. Of course, Kyle is there to pick Allen up. Now, I was a little nervous for Allen. I'm thinking he's about to die right now, but Allen is a uh, force or yeah, he's pretty much forced to go to Donald's house. And when he arrives at Donald's, they have a conversation and Donald asked him what happened. He told him I was in jail. He's like, I already know that. And then uh, Allen says, well, what don't you know? And so he's like, um, tell me what else, you know, basically what else happened. He said that I was in jail. The FBI came to talk to me. Um, I don't know their names, but they were trying to get some information on um, on the president. And of course, you know, Alan, he's smart. He's not going to reveal everything. So Donald says, OK, I need you to be in the White House. I need you to be my eyes and ears. So I need you in there. Go home, change your clothes, whatever you got to do. So when Donald, when Alan arrives back home, of course, Dale is there waiting. And Dale, Alan asked Dale, well, did you go and hide? hide the stuff that I told you to hide and that was like well how could I do that when you told me to stay here like how was I where was I supposed to go and plus you do know I have gangsters that's on my tail listen I'm just trying to do what I got to do to survive I'm not trying to be out here in these streets like this y'all in DC are tripping y'all got me out here looking crazy I'm about to be unalive by gangsters dealing with y'all and this White House shenanigans so Alan tries to reassure Dale to, hey, man, it's going to be okay. We're going to figure this stuff out. In the meantime, I will, you know, let me just go do what I got to do. I'm supposed to go to the White House. He hears a knock at the door. Of course, it's Kyle. Kyle's like, hurry up, hurry up. And so anyway, you guys, of course, hearing the voice of Kyle makes Dale nervous. And he's just ready to get out of there. He's trying to survive. So anyway, we see these two and they are about to have this apology get started. Now, listen, Victoria tells Simone that she has to get down on her knees and apologize to prove to her that she is sincerely apologetic. Now, listen, I'm shocked at Simone. Like, girl, what you doing on your knees in front of Victoria? I can understand giving the apology, quote unquote, but now you on your knees apologizing and begging? Nah, I was not with this moment, but it is what it is. It is the oval. Expect the unexpected. So I feel like if Simone Simone, just like some other people said, if Simone and Priscilla were to game up and work together, they could definitely take Victoria down. Will we see a moment where these two ladies get to work together? I hope so. I'm definitely hoping that they will work together so they could shut Victoria down. OK, so back to this moment, this man after the round found out he pulled a blicky out on the one and only Sam and Sam was like listen I'm just here looking for a kid I felt like this is what Sam was going to do but he says I'm here looking for a kid I just traced him traced him here he was on a motorcycle or on a moped and the tracks red led me to this well he thought that he was going to pop one in in Sam and Sam was not with it he literally took him out and took him down on the ground big Manny you um he lets him know he proceeds to let him know I'm trained for this you pretending to play police so sam literally gave this man the bitterness he effed around and found out don't let the size fool you sam literally took manny rockadushi out and i was actually here for it we know the shenanigans that manny pulls on the rockadushi compound so for someone to take him down i was definitely definitely here for it all so sam gets in the truck and he calls makes a call to max and let max know hey i need you to come through i got some business i need us to handle bring somebody big with you now of course 
Sam, Max is going to get a sound the business. You want me to bring Bobby? No, I don't want you to bring Bobby. Um, at this point, who else is he going to bring Sam? Um, Sam? So get ready. There's going to be another interaction at some point between Max, Bobby, and Sam. I'm here for it. In the meantime, he's trying to get some information from Manny to find out where is the one and only Jason. Now, we know Jason got on that bike, but where exactly, which direction did he go in? We don't know. But I know that there is going to be more of Manny. Manny is going to get tortured. If you check out next week's episode, Manny is going to get some beatdowns going on so that they can get some information again. I'm here for it all. Now, we finally end up and we see that Kareem has made his way, unfortunately, by force to the president's room. And unfortunately, he ends up getting popped or do it or does he? Because the president asked him, where did you get the drugs from? Who's responsible? You tried to unalive me. And of course, Kareem was like, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I got the drugs from my cousin. So he's asking, well, what's your cousin's name? What's your cousin's name? Kareem is loyal. He's not telling who his cousin is or he's not telling the cousin's name. So we see that um, Alonzo is there, of course, and the president says, tell him what happened to you this morning. And Alonzo proceeds to let Kareem know that the president uh, tried to shoot him this morning, but he had on his bulletproof vest. Now, Kareem, of course, does not have on a bulletproof vest, but he is threatened with a blicky to his scalp. Now, will he actually get popped or will Alonzo not actually pop him like this is going to be an interesting question anyway you guys i personally don't think that he is going to get popped i think that he's going to be taken to donald for more questioning but we will see that is all to be determined contingent on the next episode which we will receive next week i hope you guys stay tuned to check it out with that being said thank you all so much for tapping in with your girl Tika Sean here at all things ruthless home of the ruthless addicts if you're new to my channel find me for the first time please hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell if there was something that i missed please let me know in the comments we'll definitely chat about it okay all right you guys that's about it thank you so much and you already know stay ruthless